In my last video I compared my manual raw AGR workflow with the inbuilt AGR workflow of this Insta360 ONE X. It was obvious that the raw light maps actually contain more lighting data. So I will show you now how I actually shoot these raw 360s on this Insta360 ONE X. But it will also work on the 361 as well on the Xiaomi Mi Xiaomi Sphere. Basically any 360 camera that shoots raw and has full control over exposure will work. So let's jump right in and show you how it's done. First you light the scene the way you want it to look. Then you put your 360 camera in the position where your CG element will be. Be sure that one of the lenses is facing towards the virtual camera because the sides can have some stitching issues and therefore some weird lighting artifacts. This is the way I wanted my scene to look. I want to have a nice blue stripe and a white stripe on the elevator door. And now we jump into the mobile phone app and start shooting 360 RAWs. Now this may be a very obvious thing to point out, but you as a camera operator need to be out of the shot from this 360 camera as much as possible because you don't want to be showing up in reflections. You also want to have as little influence on the lights as possible. So if you can get rid of people on set it would be nice, but usually that is not the case and the possibility. So you focus mainly on where the action has been shot. So let's start making some pictures. So we first start the app. It will look something like this after it has done the whole flash screen. So this is our setup right now that we can have a live preview on, that's kind of cool. Let's check if we, yeah, we still have a nice blue and yellow line on there. Now we're going to tap into photo mode. Usually it's on, a, on an HDR. This is usually what you will see. Let's go back to the standards. This is usually how it's uh, set. So we go to photo mode, then we tap on the auto button, all the way to the right to manual. Then we set it to ISO 100, usually it comes in at 800. Set the exposure properly, that is 1 30th of a second over here. We tap the RAW button because we want to make RAW images. And the auto white balance, it could change between shot and shot, so we'll set it in this case to incandescent. So basically we are manual, ISO 100, 1 30th of a second for normal exposure. My white balance in this case incandescent and we're shooting raw. So this is what you want to have. Then we shot, shoot the first picture. Clip, there it goes. So we have the first picture and we're focusing on this shot. We tap on the sliders again. And now we're going to we go stop down, that is quite interesting. We tap the slider button again, slide to the next exposure, 120th of a second, really dark. So we have that highlight detail, that is what is important. And you can take as many as you want basically, you could go through the whole stack. Although usually EV4 is enough, but let's take another one here. For the sake of argument, we go to, to four, uh, 240th of a second. Looks really nice and dark. I love my, uh, my lighting, to be honest. The blue line with the white line. Took a lot of uh, messing around. Now we go and expose the other way. So we were at 130th as our normal exposure. So now we step to 115th, half of 130th. So it's open longer. And what I found is that the screen update doesn't really always show the picture that you have taken, the live view. So don't be worried, it will be correct in your photo roll. We tap again. We would go up one stop, but there is no one seven and a half. It's one tenth. So it's sort of like, nah, okay. So what I usually do is take one tenth and uh, one fifth if I take a four bracket. That way we are pretty much in the approximation as well. It's doesn't have to be exact, that is the good thing about HDRs. So we'll take a one-fifth as well. Usually this is where I will be stopping, but since we also took sh two shots 
uh, in the shadow I will also take an extra shot in the highlight. Now the timer of the shutter is also taking uh, its toll. Since the shutter is open a long time, you don't want any people moving around, so you want to have the camera set on a tripod. And one second. To really capture all the highlight detail. And... One second would be very, very overexposed, but we can take it and we'll see in lumina, uh, luminance where we stack the images together what it will look like. We can always decide to throw uh, one out. And we're done. I copied all the images from the SD card and they come in DNG format and an INSP format. This looks more like a GIF to be honest. Which is kind of cool because you can see the picture on your uh, system before you copy it. We select all the DNG files and we'll drag them into Insta Studio for 1x. It's a beta but it's still working very well I have to say. Because we need to stitch them. Let's have a look at them. It's not the quickest app I have to admit. But yeah they look like they are stitched. You can keep the automatic horizon correction on, but personally I'll switch it off. I think it looks better if it's uh, straight. It's normal stitching in this case. And that's about it, yes. I have to select them all, that's kind of weird, even though you say batch export. I want 4K. I want them to be in my project folder so it's done now we'll close the application because we have the images now so we start oh photoshop we say open and we open all the images we're in camera raw you uh, select the first one and detail I set sharpening to about 49 because it's generally a very soft image as you could have seen also in the uh, other video I do some luminance noise reduction because there is uh, a lot of noise in the luminance and also a color noise reduction about 25 pixels and then I remove the chromatic aberration because it's a wide angled lens so you have the purple blue fringe and that's basically all the processing, maybe took some color temperature, but here it's okay. So then you select all of them. Without that one, and you say sync settings, and you know when they're synced, if they have this uh, black little icon on it. You select all the images, and you say save images. I put them in a folder underneath the stitched because I know that they're stitched and I know that they're color corrected. I never override my original images. And it's done. Yeah, they're there. So now we can start up Luminance and start the stacking process. Luminance is a free app for HDRIs and it's actually pretty decent, I have to say. Uh, better than the Photoshop uh, method. I found out with Photoshop I had more uh, misalignments and it does too many things automatically which I don't want. So we go to the CC, we'll select them all, open and they'll appear here. So we have in total a 6 EV from plus uh, three to minus uh, almost three actually we have three here almost four so and this one is really dark do i want that in there usually you want to have to, somewhat of a balance i think i'm going to take that one out the minus 
four we have the minus three point five that's good that was uh, the second exposure one second exposure we're not going to auto align them because they're taken on a tripod so technically as long as you don't bump them uh, bump into them they are perfectly aligned so then we do next and generally I do a Debevetch, Debevetch, I don't know how to pronounce it, with a triangular and I want a gamma response, just want a flat image. So finish, now it starts working. And it comes in at only 256 as I put it to 4K and do a new update. Zero minus two plus two looks good looks good enough for the sake of uh, a tutorial and then you do save as and you save your HDRI and you want to save it as a TIFF because that has the most amount of data if you want you can go into Photoshop convert it to a HDR but basically that is as far as I understand a compressed TIFF so, ACRI hallway of my studio. 32 uh, bits, that is what you want. Save. And we're done. Uh, you could save the whole settings thing. Mm, I don't. Now we can open a blender and we can import it. Let me open Blender for a second. Open a second one. I've been very diligent with all the beta releases. I have three different ones now. Then we go to World. Yep. Color. Couldn't see my microphone is in the way. It's all the way in the corner. Environment texture. Open our hallway TIFF, and if we move it to, then we'll see we have the whole HDRI. Personally, like cycles a lot. I want to align my camera to this view. And let's add a sphere there as well. Give that a bit of a nice reflective texture. We'll make it metallic. We'll drop the roughness so we have a nice shade smooth. A nice mirror ball, maybe scale it up so we can see. We see we have some of the highlights already. And do I want to save it now? Just do a quick render here for you guys, low samples. That already matches nicely. You can see how the light on this uh, sign really matches and draws in the cube, so that looks good. I could have done a bit better time spending and not doing noise reduction but generally this is this is passable you're not using the background so yeah it looks good we have a little highlight from one of the lamps above there we have the reflection of the elevators so that is how you do a uh, an, a raw HDRI using a uh, 360 camera so enjoy and see you in the next one